Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Skylum Software updated Luminar Neota version 1.13.0. In today's video, we're going to take a look at what's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Luminar Neo. Now, in this video, we're going to take a look at two of the more prominent new features found in this version of the application. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to Skylum's website. There you'll find a list of everything that's new in this version of the app, as well as bug fixes and new camera and lens support. Now, the first new feature I want to talk about is blur. There are actually three different types of blur you could apply to an image. In this video, since it's just really an overview, I'm going to cover one of those types of blur. In a future video, I'll cover everything you need to know about blur in Luminar Neo. Now, if you look closely at this image here, you can see it's a model and she's in an office. But if you look over on the left-hand side, you'll see there are actually two different layers. I actually clipped the model out from a different image and dropped her on top of the image of the office. So this is a composite. And this is one way to use blur. If you look at the image, you'll notice that the office is in focus front to back. And it would probably look a bit better if that office was a bit blurred. So what you could do is apply blur to a specific layer. Now I am clicked on the layer of the office and to use blur, go over on the right hand side and go down to uh, creative. And it's the second tool from the bottom blur. And I mentioned that there are three different types of blur. Specifically, there's Gaussian, mo motion and twisted. I'll cover motion and twisted in a future video. Right now we're going to use Gaussian. And all you need to do is turn the amount up and you'll see we're just blurring out the background. So you could apply the amount. Now angle and place blur center won't be applicable to Gaussian blur. That's only applicable to motion and twisted blur. Right now we just want to blur the background out just a little bit. And it's as easy as that. So very easy to use. But most of us probably aren't working on composited images where we have the model isolated and clipped out on her own layer, his own layer. So what do you do? Well, let me show you. We'll go over to catalog. I have the same exact image, but this is a JPEG. So if we go over to the edit panel, you'll notice that there's just one layer and it has the office and the model. Well, we could still use blur on this layer. Uh, to do it, go back to that blur tool. And this time, instead of just turning up the amount, you see I'm blurring everything out, go to masking, go to the mask AI. And if this works properly, it should find a human in the scene and we'll let it do its thinking as you can see all that geometric pattern. And there we have a human. So we'll click on that. And actually, if I stay and hover over that long enough, it should give us a red overlay. It does. And it's on our human. So it picked the human, but we don't want to blur the human. We want to blur everything else. So what you need to do is go to this little arrow and go back and then to go to more actions and click on that little arrow to open that up and invert it. Now you could click on show to make sure that it did invert. You could see now the red overlays on the background. So we're good to go. We'll go to adjustments and we'll turn the amount up and we'll blur that background. So that's it. Now this isn't as precise. You could see it's starting to blur her shoulders. So this quite isn't quite as effective as when you have independent layers as the previous example. They're always improving uh, Luminar Neo, and I suspect that they'll improve this blur tool as well and the masking part of it where you could actually mask everything but the human so you could blur it out a little more effectively. So this is one of the new prominent new features found in Luminar Neo. The other prominent new feature has to do with Lightroom. So I'm going to close Light or Luminar Neo down and we're in Lightroom now and it has to do with the panorama extension. So if you purchase the extension uh, for panoramas in Luminar Neo, you now could access it from Lightroom. For this example, I have four images of this scene of the city of Buffalo. And you can see they're all uh, extremely underexposed. I was exposing for the sky. The sky was so dramatic, I wanted to be careful not to blow it out. And I overdid it a little bit. And I haven't edited these at all. So these are unedited raw files. I want to stitch them together in Luminar Neo. To do that, click on one, hold the shift key down and click on the last one. So they're all selected. Then go up to file, then go down to export with preset. 
then go down and you'll notice that there's a section for Luminar Neo. We could edit a copy with the Lightroom adjustments. We could focus stack if you have that extension. We could do HDR merge if you have that extension. We could just open the source files there. We could stitch a panorama in Luminar Neo. This is what we want to do. Also, you could upscale if you want to, but we want to stitch the panorama in Luminar Neo. Click on that. And what will happen is Lightroom will send these four images over to Luminar Neo and you'll get this box. What you could do is click on this little gear icon and you have some options. You could uh, distortion correction. If you didn't do lens distortion or you need to do lens distortion, you could do it here. You could de-vignette if you have some lens vign uh, vignetting um, on each of the images. Just de-vignette it so it will look better when it's stitched together. And if you have chromatic aberration, uh, you could remove that as well. If you click any of these, it just takes longer to do the... Um, the stitching. In this case here, I don't need to click any of those, and we're just going to click continue. Now, you may be asking yourself, why would I want to stitch a panorama in Luminar Neo when I could stitch panoramas in Lightroom Classic? Well, Luminar Neo gives you more projections to choose from, so it is possible that you may get a better stitch in Luminar Neo than you would have got in Lightroom, just because you have more um, of options basically. And those projections are over here on the left. And you can see by default, it's going to give you this first one spherical. The next to that is cylindrical. I'll click on that and you can see it kind of gave me more sky. Next to that is Mercator. And you can see that gave me less sky. The next to that is Plane. This usually is my favorite projection for cityscapes because it tends to make the building straight and sometimes they're tilted backwards or tilted towards the outer side of the frame. It tends to make everything straight. And you can see that is exactly what it did. And the last one is spiral or no, fisheye. That's fisheye, yeah. So we'll go to this one right here because I like that one. And then we'll click continue. And then it will show you um, auto crop it did. And you have the option to just take it and click on crop or you could grab a handle and crop it the way you want it cropped. I'll just leave it the way they have it and click crop. Then we'll click save. Now, it stays in Luminar Neo. This may be another reason why you want may want to do your stitching in Luminar Neo because there may be a tool or something in Luminar Neo that isn't available in Lightroom Classic that you want to apply to the image. Well, you could do it here. Um, once it shows, we'll be able to edit it. There it is. Now, uh, maybe it's a preset. Maybe you want to use, there's a specific Luminar Neo preset you want to use. Well, you could do it right now. Or we'll go over to edit. And once it goes to edit, it does take a little while, especially when you um, sent over raw files that are very large uh, because the files are so large and I just stitched for them together. This is a very high resolution image. So it does take a little while to do its thing. Now, it did it. Now I'll go to Enhance, and I'll just take Accent up. Then I think I'll go to Develop, and I want to open the shadows up quite a bit. Maybe even go to Whites and Blacks, and I think I'll make it a little brighter there, a little darker there. It also has, I didn't, I wasn't very careful with the crop. You could see right there, there's a little bit of, um, like, dead pixels down there. I'll just let that be. I'm going to click apply because you could edit in Lightroom as well. So nothing stopping you. You could do some editing in uh, Luminar Neo. And then once it returns to Lightroom Classic, you could finish up your editing there if you want to. And we're back in Lightroom and it should appear. Yes, it did. It's right there. And there it is. Now we have these dead pixels down here. I should have caught that when I was in. Um, when I was in Luminar Neo, but we'll do it just as easily fixed here. So there is our panoramic image done in Luminar Neo, and most of the processing was done there as well. So those are two of the more prominent new features found in this version of Luminar Neo. Again, that's version 1.13.0. Again, in the description below this video, I have a link to Skylum's website. There you'll find a list of everything that's new as well as bug fixes and new camera and lens support. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it.
Talk to you guys soon.